Well, Reformation Sunday, and you know this whole Reformation topic has to do with Bible, hopefully you have at your house, has to do with this, how this Bible is looked at and used and what the, what the gospel message actually is, because the gospel message is there, it's in there, and yet we know that there were issues about how that good news is being handled. The Bible's amazing. This is, this is God's revealed word, things that he's shared, life-changing things that he's shared with you. We have, we have this, this written word, right? We know, that, we know that the good news is shared, but um, Moses is not here with us. He saw the burning bush, right? The, the apostles saw Jesus. They're not here. People die. The word is this cool thing that over centuries, God's good news is shared with us. And we as a church, we get to, we get to take care of that. We get to be refreshed in it. We get to share it, explore it, discover more. The beauty of that is over all the centuries, this thing that's on your shelf, people have come to a walk with the Lord with. Jan Hus is a, a man that lived in Bohemia. John Hus, Jan Hus. Um, he went to the University of Prague uh, in the 1400s. Kind of amazing to think of a college still around. Um, but he, he picked his Bible off his shelf, and he read it, explored it, and he ends up having questions. And the concept of that good news that's in there, and is it being shared, he had, he had concerns about that. And he gets invited to a, a big church council, he kind of gets in conflict with some of the, the church people, and he gets invited to a big church council, and he's told to recant those things that he's teaching, and he doesn't, and he's burnt to the stake and at the stake and, and killed. About a hundred years later, Martin Luther, who had thoroughly studied his Bible, he had taken that down and explored. He has questions. He wants to get that gospel message thing right. And he has teachings that come out. He gets invited to a big church council. He's asked to recant. And the things that had to be in on his mind as he does that, and he, he doesn't recant. We know that, that that's a bold launch into handling Scripture in a, in a different way in the, in the church. In England, about 16 years later, another man, William Tyndale, he had his Bible, and he translated it into that, that unrespected English language. And so people with, that spoke English could, could read it. And he wanted people to explore it for themselves, to get that gospel message right. And he's arrested, and he's killed for doing that. You joyfully, you get to pull your Bible off your shelf. God's word, the thing that he's, he's used to, to share this message, you get to take that down, and you get to explore it in your homes. And thank, we get to come together as a church home and explore that together and, and walk through his word. God has shared truth with us. And this is the means that he's done it. This is the means, this written word, that carries across centuries, right? So at a church home, we get to narrow down what is that gospel message that was so important to some. You'll hear in Lutheran churches, you'll hear me use the phrase, like at a Bible study, the phrase, the comfort of the gospel. The comfort of the gospel. So you want to get a handle today on, what is that? What is the comfort of the gospel? And we're going to explore a couple words, freedom and gospel, because the real good news has a, has a peace that goes with it that you feel and you know, and you get to live with, right? There's truth about what Jesus has done and accomplished that you get to 
to walk with all your days. So we're going to explore that a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the gospel reading, John chapter 8, because this is a great, this is a great account to, to look at. There's some, there's some people that believe. Just before this, we know that the end of the last chapter, after some long discussions, some people come to, to believe in him. And John starts this chapter to some of the Jews who believed. Now, <clears throat> this is going to go downhill from here for them. If you follow this story, um, in, by verse 33, they're disagreeing with him about what he's saying. And then verse 37, um, his words have no place in their life. And by verse um, 44, he says that they are, Jesus says to them that they're children of the devil. It just gets worse. By verse 59, they pick up stones to kill him. This, he's challenged them. He's challenged them with something here that makes this spiral. So what is it? He says, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. That doesn't seem to be too challenging. Let's explore that. If you abide, that word abide, John actually, John uses that 40 times in his Gospels and then another 26 times in his letter, the letters, the majority of use in Scripture. And it kind of gets translated abide. It can be remain, um, stay, stay put, um, sit here, you know, that kind of thing. Continue in this spot. So thinking about your walk with Christ, being a disciple, you'll know the truth, you abide here, and the truth will set you free. What truth? What truth are people to abide in? And free from what? Free, free to do what? What freedom's a big word. What kind of freedom? Free to do whatever. Hmm. They get upset at him. They get upset after this sentence. What makes them upset? <clears throat> We're not slaves. We're not bound. We never have been. We're the seed of Abraham, the children of Abraham. I think this is a good one to explore about our mindsets um, and our thoughts about um, issues with, with being saved. So some people look at this and say, oh, they were just being so stupid. The Jewish people have been slaves all the time. You know, they, they, they were slaves in, in Egypt. You know, they're slaves right now with the, under the Romans. They're in bondage with that. I don't, I don't think they forget that. I don't think that's where they're going with this because it's part of their identity. They pray about being enslaved in Egypt and they are freed. They know full well they were conquered by Babylon and carted off into slavery. They know that. The Greeks, the Maccabean revolt had to take place to get rid of the Greeks and the Romans are right here now. So what is it they're really going to in their heart when they talk about this? Where do they go in their defense here? They say, we are children of Abraham. So let's think about that. Even though those civilizations did conquer their government, they can say inside, we never became Egyptians. We never became Babylonians. We're, we're Hebrews. We're chosen. We're the children of Abraham, right? So that whole, that whole being freed thing, we don't need that. We're not, we're not in bondage. There's nothing here to fix. That's a spot in the human heart that can go on in any century, right? That idea of self-identity. Do I need to be freed and saved? I'm offended that you even think I need freeing. I'm sure that happens in, in conversations that 
that you have, right? It's a timeless challenge to recognize or acknowledge, I, I have an issue that needs to be dealt with. Because at the heart of Jesus' challenge is that issue. Bondage. Shackles on you. Shackles. A lack of real freedom deep inside. And Jesus leads it to the cause for this. Right away in the next verse, he says, what the cause of all that is, you're a slave to sin. There's the bondage. There's the thing going on inside you. You can see that and say, no, you've got it all wrong. You've got it all wrong. The problems in my life aren't in here. The problems in my life are, are that job over there or that neighbor or this thing that's causing me troubles. There's my issues. I know it. I feel the stress of it. And Jesus says, no, it's, it's inside you. There's the shackles. That can be a challenging place for us to go to. That's the issue of grasping the good news, the gospel message. All those questions when people took their Bibles down off their shelf, all those pondering a relationship with God, wanting to get it right, it has to do with acknowledging that spot there. And what's the solution to that shackles? You have to think of yourself as shackled. In bondage. And that's a challenge for us sometimes, wanting to be proud or smart or, or our self-identity is, is, is that we, we can handle things. Jesus takes us to challenge this challenging spot. And the solution is what God's word shares with us. The solution to that problem. Jesus came and lived here and, and walked our walk walked sinless, remained sinless, right? Right through death, he remained sinless for the, the purpose of making this way so that through faith in him, your shackles are, are freed. And you can have that holiness, that rightness inside you through faith in him. He come, he, he came to save us. That's the message of the good news. Slaves that are shackled. There's a message that is uncomfortable that we can't free ourselves. We need to be freed by someone else. Another human who lived unshackled. He was able to truly face inside that issue. And remain pure. You are forgiven. You are freed. Freed of your shackles through faith in him. That's the joy about what we talk about. Jesus has saved you. And as we go through life, our challenge is to go to that spot of honesty of confessing our need of him. Confessing our sin. Just stating, we, have, we say that at the beginning of our liturgy, trying to take off any mask of pretending, just having our words and our heart match reality. And there he is saying, I know, I know already. And here's forgiveness. This whole walk of faith, the good news, there's a comfort to walking with that. There's not a burden of performance or a burden of just the right enough information or having taken the right steps. There's a comfort of being rescued. If the Son sets you free, God the Son, Jesus, you are free indeed. And then we wrestle with what that word freedom means and how do we live with freedom. We have it deep inside. We're supposed to feel his peace. I thought it'd be appropriate on a Reformation Sunday to do a, one little reading from Luther. In Luther's uh, paper on freedom of a Christian, he talks about that concept of you living with freedom. A Christian is perfectly free Lord of all, 
subject to none. Well, that sounds good. A Christian is a perfectly dutiful servant of all, subject to all. It seems like there's an art to this concept of living with freedom. As a child of God, we're, we're free not to just seek to, as the Romans reading, seek to indulge ourselves in life, or seek pleasure, but, but to follow God's will as a child of God. And he says, there, there you'll find real happiness. There you'll find real peace, following the Father's will. That's addressed this whole concept of being free and letting the Spirit fill you up for life to the full. In Galatians, Paul talks about some of the, if you walk down this other path of seeking to take charge of life and yourself, now the works of the flesh lead to strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, envy. It takes you to those places. But when you walk with the fruit of the Spirit, so that walk of faith, knowing God is with me and in me, and His Spirit is in me, the fruit of the Spirit, things like peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, those are the things that start to flow out of one in this walk with freedom. So on this Reformation Sunday, you have the, the joy of knowing you're free. You are, you are loved, saved, forgiven. And you, you get to live life to the full by following the Father's will, seeking to walk close to him, trusting him. You are freed by the Son, and you are freed indeed. So enjoy the adventure of walking close with him, seeking the Father's will, exploring the Bible, exploring it together, and walking life to the full here until that amazing day that we do see him face to face. Amen.